Hi folks, Paul here, and today I'm going to do a video on solvent welding 3D printed parts. I have this big project in the works right here that I'm not quite ready to talk about yet, um, but I've been seeing on Twitter and YouTube recently a lot more about using products like 3D Gloop to put your 3D printed parts together, to essentially bond them together. And I thought what I'd do is give a little video about how that's working, some of the chemicals that are involved in doing that, and also provide you with a potential alternative that's a bit cheaper um, that can get you similar results to using products like 3D Gloop. Check it out. Okay, so I don't really have an intro or anything to show you. I'm not really a YouTube content creator. I'm just sort of doing this for fun. I think a lot of us who've been in 3D printing for a while already know that for materials like ABS, you could use acetone to do uh, vapor smoothing of parts, and you could also use that for solvent welding parts together. And just in the last couple of years, we're starting to see more products available for doing this with PLA and PETG. And I thought the first thing that we should do is identify what the active ingredient is in products like 3D Gloop that's used for solvent welding PLA and PETG parts. And that is dichloromethane or methylene chloride. And I have a, a little bottle here that I brought home from the lab. So I have a biochemistry lab, and I'd actually considered shooting this whole video um, inside the fume hood. And the reason for this is that dichloromethane and other chlorinated solvents that you can use for melting PLA and PETG, um, they're pretty toxic. So they're, it's, dichloromethane is a known carcinogen, and so you want to be careful when you're using this. I do have a fan going off camera here. I'm going to minimize my exposure as much as possible, but please always use safety precaution when you're using products like 3D Gloop or any other chemicals, really. So dichloromethane, um, other chlorinated solvents like chloroform, will melt PLA and PETG. And this is what is in 3D Gloop and other such products. And I want to show you first, just do a little example, um, using straight dichloromethane and showing you how the solvent welds parts together. All right, now before I go any further, you'll see that I've at least put on some, some gloves here. These gloves are too small. Put on the appropriate size gloves. Um, and I'm going to open up this dichloromethane, and to get this out, uh, what I'm actually going to use is, is actually just a transfer method like this. You can use things like transfer pipettes, um, but I find that because these are organic solvents, um, there's no surface tension, so it's really hard to, uh, to keep these in transfer pipettes or other types of things. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually put a little bit on this excess part that I have here. It is a liquid. I'm taking a little bit too long, so... Um, and I'm just putting it on the surface here, and then I'm using purge blocks here because they're easy to do. Um, and I'm just going to push down on this, and basically just putting a little bit of dichloromethane on the bottom of this PLA part, and then I'm just fusing it to um, this other piece of PLA. And this works really nicely. In just you know just a few seconds, this is actually bonded. So with using pure dichloromethane, it melts very, very quickly, and um, it also evaporates very quickly, which means that you got to work kind of fast in these cases. Now, this can be used for doing vapor smoothing of PLA parts. Um, you do need to have an enclosed chamber, and I would, would certainly recommend using a fume hood in cases like this. Um, but you have to actually heat up the dichloromethane as well to make it work um, well, at least in, in my experience. But here it is now. So just in a couple seconds now, we fuse this little PLA part to another one using pure dichloromethane. From those that I've spoken to that use products like 3D Gloop on a regular basis, um, the biggest drawback is not what the results that they get. I think that everybody who uses it gets really great results. It really has to do with the cost of the product. And I think the reason why the costs are increased um, for things like 3D Gloop is that they include, um, with, along with dichloromethane, which is the active ingredient, they actually dissolve some of the polymer in the dichloromethane itself. So if you're using the 3D Gloop for PLA, 
they've dissolved some PLA in there. So when you put it on the surfaces of your parts, essentially what happens is that it dissolves either surface of the two parts that you're mating together, but you also have additional polymer that once that dichloromethane um, dissolves, helps bond those parts together. And in that way, it gives you a, a really great seal, a really great um, solvent welding between those parts. Now, what I like to do is give you sort of an alternative to that. In cases where you want the parts to be stuck together, but you don't necessarily need super strong strength like you'd get with 3D Gloop, what you basically need is some kind of consumer dichloromethane product. And the simplest thing you can get to do that is actually just paint stripper. Now, there are lots of different types of paint strippers. If you go to the big box store, um, you can find a whole bunch of different ones. The, the main thing that you're going to look for when you're looking for this paint stripper um, are what the ingredients are. Now, of course, they don't actually tell you what the ingredients are. So what you're looking for are actually the warnings on this so that you know that this contains dichloromethane or methylene chloride. And basically what you can do is if you look on the back of here, you can see that this says the, this product can expose you to chemicals including methylene chloride, which is dichloromethane, which is known to the state of California to cause cancer. So here it is. We know that this is going to contain dichloromethane, and we can now use this for solvent welding our PLA, or I don't think this works as well for PETG. Uh, I think it does work, but you don't get quite as strong a bond because there isn't that much dichloromethane in here. So I'm going to just show you how that actually works. And, and before I actually do that, I mean, this is a part that I have two parts that I've bonded with dichloromethane. And you can see that you know these things are really, really very solid. They, they are together. Um, you might not get quite the same seal that you'd get with 3D Gloop, but they are put together very firmly. OK, so here's a quick demo on using the paint stripper. And I'm going to use that to bond these two PLA parts together. First, I'm going to shake this together. Um, one of the things with dichloromethane and other components in this, I think there's methanol in this as well, is that they're volatile. So when you open this, make sure you open it up slowly. Otherwise, you, you have potential to shoot out the top a little bit. So I'm going to shake it up. I'm just going to use a little natural fiber brush here just something my kids use to paint with. And I'm just going to grab a little bit of the paint stripper here, and I'm going to apply it to both of the parts. And again, I'm going to try and work fairly quickly here. I, I, there isn't a lot of dichloromethane in this, so it's not going to work as quickly as the pure stuff that I showed you. Um, but you do want to make sure that you get the parts set together before it all dissolves away close that up as quick as quickly as possible. And one of the things that I like to do is if you're doing parts like this, because it takes a little bit longer, is to actually just use a clamp. So I'm going to clamp these two things together. Um, one of the things that you'll notice when you do this is that's, and I, I don't know if this is also true for, for 3D glue, but if you get any excess on here, um, once this dries away, it is going to turn kind of white. So if I actually grab that other part that I'd done here, um, you can take a look at this. You can see that you know where you had excess coming out of the, the edges right here, it's kind of white. Um, so you're going to get that with these parts. Um, I haven't noticed any issues with, you know, for example, painting over that or sanding it off. Uh, that doesn't seem to, to be a big issue. But I think that's mostly because this is a paste style um, stripper. And it, it works fine in this case, but it has other things in there to, to make it heavy um, that ends up giving you sort of this, this gunk. Um, if you can find the, the non-paste variety of this that contains methylene chloride or dichloromethane, um, you probably won't get as much of this, this white stuff that's around the edges. Um, so this thing has just been here for I don't know, what's that been? Maybe about a minute or so. And this is already, at this point, it's bonded together. So it, it probably, if I, if I peeled right now, this would come apart. Um, but if I leave this with the clamp in place for just a, a few minutes, maybe 10 minutes, um, those two parts are basically going to be inseparable at this point. Um, again, this is not a, a, I wouldn't say it's a direct replacement for a 3D Gloop. They have additional things inside their um, formulations to help things stick together. You're definitely not going to want to use this on your print bed. Um, this is only strictly for solvent welding parts together. But I think um, for those that are maybe doing a lot of this, this is going to save you a bit of money. 
So I hope this video was instructive a little bit on, on describing to you the kinds of chemicals that be, can, can be used to, to fuse things like PLA and PETG and for some potentially cheaper alternatives for being able to, to fuse PLA and PETG parts together. Um, I hope you enjoy this video and please share. Thanks for watching.